This is none other than Akil Aline, a graduate of Princeton University and Cardoso Law School, who is here today to wish Canada a happy 150th birthday. Take it away, Akil. Thank you very much. Thanks so much uh, for joining us here this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's very great to join all of you again. And um, just for my uh, presentation today, I wanted to begin by giving a personal shout out of my own to someone who's not here with us in the flesh. My 11th grade history teacher, Mr. John Commons. He taught me a great deal, and one of the lessons that has stayed with me to this day was a lesson about the different schools of thought in the field of history throughout human history. And the school of thought that always appealed to me the most was the warts and all approach. An approach that acknowledges the less pleasant and less honorable aspects of a country's or a society's history, along with the good, to arrive at an accurate and honest understanding of that society's past. In keeping with that school of thought, I'd like to wish Canada a happy 150th birthday the best way I know how. Now, there's a saying that's commonly attributed to the French novelist and playwright Honoré de Balzac that has it that every great fortune begins with a crime. It's occurred to me recently that much the same thing, regrettably, can be said of countries, that every great country begins with a crime. And all that really means is that no country is completely free of injustice in its history. And of course, our home and native land or adopted land in the case of many of us, Canada, is no exception to that rule. Like every other country in the Western Hemisphere, this country does owe its existence to a history of colonization, repression of Aboriginal peoples, enslavement to some degree. It's common in this country to hear Canadians express an unfamiliarity with some of the less savory aspects of this country's own history. For example, the belief that uh, you know struggles with racism and racial injustice are an American thing, an American phenomenon that has left Canada untouched. Those of us who are familiar with all aspects of Canada's history know better. We're familiar with the repression of the Aboriginal peoples, the First Nations of this land. We're familiar with the internment of Japanese Canadians during the Second World War. We're familiar with the fact that Canada did have its own period in which slavery was practiced here, albeit on a less grand scale than south of the border. They're familiar with the uh, second class status that the Chinese immigrants to this country experienced when they were brought here to build the transcontinental railway that bound the nation together from sea to sea. They're familiar with the discrimination that African Canadians have experienced throughout our history, such as the struggle of Viola Desmond to desegregate a movie theater in New Glasgow, Scotland in the 1940s. So those of us who have that warts and all understanding of Canadian history know that Canada itself has its own reckoning to make with these less savory aspects of its history. But at the same time, no society is completely imperfect. And again, Canada is a splendid example of that phenomenon as well. This is the country that has welcomed newcomers from all the four corners of the earth to come here, live in peace, live in freedom, live in safety, and live in prosperity to build better lives for themselves and their posterity, and to build an even greater country than they encountered upon their initial arrival. This is a country that dove headfirst into both world wars from the very beginning and spent blood and treasure 
to keep the free world free and to bring more nations into the community of free countries. This is a country that has sent peacekeepers to various hot spots around the world to help keep the peace through nonviolent as well as armed means. This is a country that at present appears almost uniquely poised to play more and more of a re leadership role as a wave of angry populism takes root in various other countries of the West. Britain with its struggles with leaving the European Union, the United States with all the controversies that the new Trump administration has engendered. I remember reading an article in the Globe and Mail, I think it was maybe six months ago or so, that said German politicians had commented that they felt Germany and Canada were likely to play that leadership role, were going to emerge as new leaders of the free world, as so many other countries struggle with internal political squabbles. And I would say in recent years, this country has done a splendid job of doing exactly that. 